And now we're going to learn what makes a molecule polar. Now we've already talked about polar bonds, and we've learned that in a polar bond there's unequal sharing of electrons. But in this lesson, we're going to build on that. After this lesson, you will be able to predict whether a molecule is polar or not based on the two important factors, the shape of the molecule and the electronegativities for the elements that are bonding. A polar molecule is also sometimes called a dipole because there are two poles, or two oppositely charged ends. So in this molecule, we could divide into two halves, the top half being the negative portion, while the bottom half is the positive portion. So which molecules do this? Well, there are two requirements. A molecule will be polar if, number one, it has some polar bonds in it, and number two, those bonds are arranged asymmetrically. So let's look at a couple examples. Here we have chlorine. Recall how to predict if the bond is polar or not. We're going to look up the electronegativity value for each of the chlorine atoms. And chlorine has a value of 3.0 on the electronegativity scale. So to predict the bond, we subtract these two electronegativity values. We find the difference is zero, which tells us that the bond is not polar. This is a nonpolar bond. Therefore, the molecule must also be nonpolar. In other words, they're sharing their electrons equally. Let's look at another example. This example is for the molecule called carbon tetrachloride. Recall that that means there's one carbon and four chlorines. To predict if this molecule is polar, first let's check the bonds. And to do that, we need to look up electronegativity values for chlorine and carbon, the elements that are bonding. Again, chlorine has an electronegativity of 3.0. Carbon's electronegativity is 2.5. So in this molecule, we have a difference in electronegativity of 0.5. Recall that if the difference in electronegativity is anything more than 0.4, we would predict a polar covalent bond where one of the elements is pulling electrons and becoming a little bit more negative. So is this a polar molecule? No, it's not, because that same kind of polar bond is occurring over here, and here, and here. You see, polar molecules have charged ends. Could you pick an end of this molecule that is more negative, where the electrons are all getting pulled? We really can't. They're getting pulled to the outside, but not to one of the ends. In other words, because this molecule is symmetrical, it's not a polar molecule. Okay, one more example for the molecule called ammonia, nitrogen with three hydrogens. To predict if this molecule is polar, we're first going to look at the bonds, and then we're going to consider the shape. The electronegativity of nitrogen is 3.0, while the electronegativity of hydrogen is 2.1. Since the difference between the two is 0.9, this predicts a polar bond between nitrogen and hydrogen. All three of these bonds are identical, so what this means is the electrons are getting pulled to the nitrogen from the hydrogen atoms, making the nitrogen portion of the molecule more negative, while the hydrogen portion is more positive. So let's examine the shape. Would you say the shape of this molecule is also symmetrical, like our last one? Actually, it isn't. The bottom part of the molecule has the hydrogens, with the top part having a lone pair of electrons, this molecule has polar bonds, and these bonds are arranged asymmetrically. Therefore, this is a polar molecule. So let's review. A molecule will be a polar molecule if it has polar bonds, and if those bonds are arranged asymmetrically. Good luck as you predict your molecules.